Throughout this class, we will refine our understanding of justice by taking specific problems and having a collective debate about what we think the just thing to do, the just law, the just course of action would be. Now, we'll get involved in some debates that people will feel very strongly about. I hope you feel strongly about it. It wouldn't be worth having a class about topics or problems that you didn't feel strongly about. But I'd like to start us off with a general conversation, a debate, about a real problem of justice in our society that raises profound questions about the nature of justice. But it's an issue that, while you might feel strongly about, won't fall along necessarily your ordinary political feelings. And I think that's helpful because it means that we won't uh, begin this discussion with our, with our deeply ideological uh, political outlook. But instead, we'll start with a fresh mind and try and articulate what makes a law a rule just. And the problem is this, and I worry that this will get me in trouble with my employers, but it's a great example that raises deep philosophical questions. Should we pay college athletes? It's a serious question. The problem of amateur athletics and paying college athletes actually goes back uh, over a century. In 1905, the um, world of college football was rocked by a, a series of scandals. And in fact, there's a headline from a McClure's article in 1905, a, a feature that the headline reads, The College Athlete, How Commercialism is Making Him a Professional. So this has been with us for a very, very long time. Anxieties about the role of money in college athletics. In, it's only gotten worse over the years, and in fact, over the last few decades, the amount of money pouring into our system of college athletics has become simply astonishing. College athletics is a big money maker. In 2010, the SEC became the first conference with, to sign a billion dollar contract. That's billion with a B. College football coaches routinely make millions of dollars a year in salary. The college athletes themselves are given scholarships, they're given education, and they're given housing and room and books and board and all the things that come with it. And uh, they're given some tutors that help them along through their courses. But they're not paid. And it creates a really interesting dilemma. And you've heard increasing calls over the last several years to pay college athletes. And it raises truly profound questions about what is just. Why don't we pay college athletes? Well, we don't because we have a system called amateur athletics. And in fact, the word amateur uh, comes from the French. It means person who loves something. It means somebody who does something just because they, they love it. That's what an amateur is. It's opposed to a professional. And we have a system that goes back uh, over a century that's administered by an organization called the National Collegiate Athletic Administration, the NCAA, that isn't some eternal or natural system. It's a system that, that we've created in our country to govern college athletics and which prohibits the payment of money to college athletes for their services. Yet this is in the midst of a society where we routinely pay people uh, for their labor, for their services. And in fact, as we'll come to see throughout this course, it is one of the most basic principles of our social organization is that people are paid for their labor, that they are allowed to negotiate, to sign contracts uh, that pay them wages for their labor. And so the question that we want to ask is, why should college athletes not be paid? Or should they be paid? What makes this different from, say, a professor who's paid? What makes it different from a professional athlete? What is magic about the 18 to 22 year old? Why would we pay uh, Tom Brady, but not pay uh, a college quarterback? Why would we pay college, uh, professional quarterbacks, in fact, sometimes tens of millions of dollars a year, uh, but pay um, college quarterbacks, in fact, nothing more than an education? Now, when you think about questions like this, you may have immediate reactions like, well, it would be very hard, or it would be very expensive, or it would be very difficult for all colleges. But what I want you to do as you think through this is to try and move from those reactions to the underlying principles in the most general terms. Why does it matter that it might be difficult to administer the system? What does it matter that it might be hard for some colleges and universities to pay their athletes? Why shouldn't athletes be allowed to negotiate like anyone else? 
for their services. Think about this question. Should individual athletes be allowed to negotiate? Not just should athletes be paid some lump sum, but should, say, uh, a star quarterback coming out of high school be able to negotiate a contract for his services with universities? And then I want you to think about something else. What if it weren't universities? It's a historical circumstance, uh, not necessarily a fact of nature, that amateur athletics in the United States is tied to higher education. In fact, it's not like this almost anywhere else in the world. It's, it's uh, very unique, very strange, frankly, and people who come to our culture sometimes wonder how this system came about. It's a, it's a difficult question. But imagine that amateur athletics were instead tied to something less noble than higher education. Say they were tied to cigarette companies. Would we still think it was okay for athletes to be forced by the rules of the society to be unpaid for their uh, services from the time they're 18 to 22, but instead to be paid instead of in education in tobacco and cigarettes? Uh, what is it about higher education specifically that makes us feel that it's okay not to pay some people for what they do?